Hi and welcome to the Knits by a Hobbit podcast. Um, I, my name is Ruth, or um, well in Dutch you actually pronounce it as Ruth, but uh, I'm really used to pronouncing it as Ruth in English because that's the normal way in English. Anyway, um, I am Knits by a Hobbit on Instagram and I thought it would be fun to record a podcast because I'm a big fan of watching other podcasts and um, I thought, well, why just not give it a go myself? Uh, so here we are. I'll start with um, what I'm wearing today. I bet most people will recognize this as it's a really popular pattern, but it's the ranunculus. It's very cropped and I've made it in a lilac-y color. It's the, um, what's it called again? BC Biocon. Um, yeah, lilac. I'm not sure, but it's wool and it's cotton and it's really lovely and airy for uh, hot summer days like it is right now. Um, I'll start with finished objects. Oh, wait, it's inside out. Let me quickly turn it. So this is my most recent finished object. Um, it's the spring sorrel. I'll try to back up so you can see. I've made it only slightly cropped, like a bit longer than it was in the pattern, uh, but still slightly cropped so that when I wear high-waisted jeans, it just goes over the jean like a little bit. There's no like risk <laughs> of showing your tummy. Um, I really enjoyed knitting it. The, the yoke pattern is a lot of fun to make. Uh, I, at first, I read the instructions completely wrong and I looked at the video and I just completely misinterpreted it. So um, the first time I started the yoke, it actually looked quite bad and not at all like the pattern. Uh, and I was really confused, like, how can this be? What have I done wrong? Uh, but then I realized I misinterpreted it and I ripped it out, started again and it's looking a lot better now and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I knit this in Rowan cotton cashmere, um, but I don't think, like it was a nice, nice to knit with, but I feel like you don't notice that much of the cashmere. So um, I would personally say it's not really worth the extra price of the cashmere. It's not that much that's in there. I think it's only like 10%. Um, so it's not that much and it mainly it mainly just feels like cotton like it's a little bit soft but mainly cotton um so yeah i just maybe just get a hundred percent cotton yarn the next time but still it's a really lovely little shirt um i haven't worn it yet because i feel like it needs to be just the right weather for it because it's on the thicker side um like today it would be way too hot to wear it uh, but I also feel like in winter it would be great to um, layer this with a cardigan and stuff. Um, so that when you're hot you can take the cardigan off but you still have something that keeps you like moderately warm. You're not immediately in this really thin t-shirt. Uh, I wear a lot of cardigans in winter so it will definitely get its use. Uh, that is my only finished object at the moment. Uh, so we'll get going on widths, works in progress. Well, the first one I'm working on is an Oslo hat. This is a pattern from Petite Knit. Um, I'm just working on the brim right now. I hope you can see. I'm using a yarn from a local indie dyer, which is Atelier Sopra. And uh, it's she's from here in the Netherlands. And it's a really, really lovely yarn. Oh, here you can see, hopefully, the speckles. It's got, um, the main, mainly the speckles are purple, but there's also some dark gray and a little bit, tiny little bit of orange, yellowy colors, uh, but mainly purple. So I am, my the plan is uh, to follow the Oslo hat pattern, but then for the decreases, I'm going to use the decreases from the slouchy hat 
that uh, another podcaster, Knitting Traditions, Inge, uh, she made because I've made that pattern before. I actually test knitted it for her and it makes a lovely rounded, I don't know, top of your head. Um, and that was really lovely. I really like the look of it. I've made the Oslo hat before, but it gets kind of pointy here and it just makes it look a bit weird in my opinion. Like some for some people it looks really good, but just I'm not feeling it on my head. So I'm making it round with her decreases. And then um, I've seen a uh, little pom-pom that was the perfect like purpley color to match with those speckles. So I'll probably get that and put that on, but I'm not, 100% sure yet but if I don't like it I can always just take it off again um, and this is just I cast this on um, because I wanted something small to work on that was quite brainless and with this weather it doesn't like go all over your lap because my other work in progress is the fantastic shawl by Stephen West um, if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's this and it's really big and really warm and kind of tangled at the moment. So I'll see if I can untangle it a bit to show you. Um, but here we go, I think. Yeah, I'll stretch it out a bit over the cable it doesn't fit the whole cable anymore so i kind of need to be careful it doesn't slide off but i'm currently as you can see at the honeycomb section which is a lot of fun to knit um you can choose between the large size and the smaller size and basically when you do the small size i think either here or here before or after the ribbing uh you go on to do like the chevron edging but I really, really wanted to do uh, the honeycomb stitch because I, I was kind of thinking of making the whole honeycomb shawl. But I wanted to know if I liked the stitch first before I decided to do the entire shawl with it. Um, but I like it and I might do the entire shawl. Uh, the plan was for the advent calendar. I'm getting Atelier Sopra's um, advent calendar this winter. So I'm really excited for that because the cord the colors and the picture are stunning <laughs> uh, right up my alley so i'm really looking forward to that um but i'll try to show you the whole thing if i can let's see ah, i can't see what i'm showing you so let's just hope for the best um so this is what i've done and i'll try to show you a little bit closer So this shawl takes a lot of yarn, a lot. Um, so I'll kind of go through it. Most of them are from Atelier Sopra again. <laughs> I said she was one of my favorite indie dyes, but um, her colors are all just so gorgeous. Like they're not too strong, uh, but they're just, just really pretty. So I'll start with the section I'm working on now, the honeycombs. Um, the, the inside bit of the honeycomb is this mohair. Let's see if it will focus. No, no. But um, it's this gray mohair and it has these yellow and pink speckles, uh, which is really a lot of fun. And as you just saw, saw my shawl, it's right in that colorway it's a great one to get it a little bit neutral a little bit of a neutral color but still have it tie in with the rest of the shawl so that is a lot of fun and it's so soft it is so soft it's really really nice um so yeah that is the mohair and then with that um oh the color was gray autumn i'm not sure if i said that i'm holding that with this the cake got a little bit messy, but I'm holding that with this uh, yarn. And I think the name from this was brownish pink. Uh, and it's just, it's brownish pink. It's still very much pink, but it's got a bit more of that warm brownie tones to it, I, th I guess. 
uh, and it's really nice as well. Um, all the normal yarns, like the normal yarns from her, are just her merino base, superwash merino. I generally don't knit with superwash merino that often, but um, yeah, these are just the right color, so I decided to just go for it. Oh, and the Oslo hat. <laughs> I completely forgot to say but this one is also Atelier Sopra and the color is white orchid and then this mohair is just some drops kit silk I'm not sure what the color is but all the details of all my projects are in Ravelry um, also for the Fantastic shawl if you want to see what exact colors I used and um, where I placed them and if I swapped any around because I did some swapping along the way of colors uh, you can find that on Ravelry as well uh, okay so then we have another mohair and I think this one was called salmon this is all I have left of it ah please focus it's just this really pretty baby pink light pink and it's really nice and then um, I also have this one, which may just be one of my favorites and I may just want to get more of it so I can make a jumper out of it or a cardigan, I don't know, something, a garment. Um, so this one was Autumn So Soft and it's this like creamy white base um, with again just really soft pink and yellow a bit like this mohair but on a white base and also super wash merino not mohair of course so it's it's just so pretty i really like this one and then i have the last one from her is this one also super wash merino i think this one is just called gold and it's just really nice um warm yellow it's got a little bit of orangey tones in there but still definitely yellow and it's just my favorite color this kind of yellow is just it's so pretty i love it um then i splurged a bit on yarn and i got some king fiber suri i'm not sure what the actual name is again something suri cloud baby cloud i don't know but suri uh, the fluffy one and it's this one and again it has the same colors as you can see if it wants to focus it's got a bit of orangey tones with yellow and pink and the colorway is called uh, pangolin and it's the softest thing ever and the colors just come out gorgeous i, I can show you like right here at the top let's see in the shadow versus the sun <laughs> you can kind of see how the colors turn out it's just uh oh wait that's also the back of the shawl this is the front but you can see it's just absolutely gorgeous it's really really pretty and then uh the last yarn i am using is actually a hand spun that i spun myself it was one of the very first things that I spun myself after having like a bit of practice with some cheaper fibers um, this is a wool and silk base and it's really nice and um, it has again the same colors it's very orangey and pink and it has some yellows and I hope you can see if it wants to focus so yeah it's really pretty. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm actually really quite proud of it. Um, I'll see if I can show it to you, knit up. It's in this section. And as you can see, it just, it's just really pretty. It's a bit on the thinner side at some points and a bit thicker, but I mean, it's a hand spun and it was one of my first hand spuns. And it's definitely something I'm very, very proud of. Um, it's also, let's see, down here in the seat stitch section. And then it will be at the, I believe in the border chevron again together with this color. So that would be really nice. 
um, as a contrast to the handspun. So um, that is my works in progress. It actually went quite quick. I don't have that much uh, that I'm working on. Sometimes I have some secret projects actually. Uh, which I'm not used to, because I am not a designer, I wouldn't know where to even start, but I'm test knitting for someone. Uh, so I do have some more stuff I just can't show you until we get the go-ahead to do so. Um, so when I do, I will definitely show you on Instagram and here, and I will definitely do that, because I'm super excited about them, I really like these projects, and I really like the designer. So um, that's a lot of fun to be like included in the process um so yeah um then i will show you this i've put it all in this bag it's not something i'm working on but just to keep it together i did a yarn swap with knit crits on instagram and i believe she has a youtube channel as well where she posts more like chill vibe um knitting videos not as much of a talkative podcast, um, but it's really nice to have on in the background and kind of knit with her. Um, she's a really nice person as well. And I met her through the Knitting Traditions um, yarn swap thread on Ravelry in her group, in the Knitting Traditions group. And we did this swap and I'm so happy with it. She told me there's even more coming. So I'm, I'm really excited and really, really grateful for this. Um, so... I'll show you what I got. Um, so we did a yarn swap where uh, I got her all the Scandinavian uh, and European yarns that she can't really get in America because she lives in America and I live in the Netherlands. And here in the Netherlands, we can just, we have an amazing range of yarns that are available, especially from Scandinavia, like Hillesvag. And if, I, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, Hillesvag and <laughs> Rauma, um, Drops, Istex, like the Lopi yarn. It's just, we have it all available. Um, Filcolana, Filicolana, Filcolana. Um, it's just all available and it's really nice. Um, so she wanted some rustic wool, so I sent her all the rustic wools. And she sent me some plant-based yarns, some more like summery yarns, because that's I really wanted to try that out. Like by now, I've tried out a lot of wools and I wanted to get more into the cotton and the linen and stuff like that. So, um, she the first thing is this Loops and Threads yarn. It's cream cotton. And it's this yarn, it, this one is just a creamy color, like nearly white. Um, yeah, the color is called cream. Limited time only, I'm not sure how limited that is. Um, I had never heard of this brand before, but the yarn actually feels really soft, which I didn't really expect for a cotton, but that's really nice. Um, and then for the same yarn, she also got me this lilac color which i am super excited for this is one of my favorite colors i told her to just get all the pastels i love pastels you can't really go wrong with those so i have three of these and these are actually 150 gram balls if i'm not um wrong let me see Oh wait, they are 78% cotton and 13% nylon. So there is a bit of nylon in there, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna use it. Um, the colorway is called Pale Orchid. There is 296 meters on 150 grams. And it's a little bit on the thicker side. Um, I already have this in my Ravelry queue because I just had the perfect project in mind for this, which the sample is made with a similar color and I just absolutely fell in love with that. Um, so I'm going to make that. I forgot the name. Let me quickly look it up. I have my computer here next to me so I can just quickly go to my Ravelry queue. It's got the province top by, I'm sorry if I'm going to pronounce this totally wrong. Ekaterina Vorobeva. 
um, but basically it's a t-shirt and it has these like v-shapes above your boobies <laughs> with a bit of lacy work but it looks so pretty and so still like i feel like lace work quickly becomes something for grandmas like that's my personal opinion you might think something completely different and it's totally fine but i, th I think this one still looks really Ugh, i can't talk anymore i think this one still looks really modern and um, i'm absolutely in love with the pattern so this will be the yarn for that which i'm super excited for then she got me i got really excited for about this one i um don't think i have a project for this yet but um, one will come along um if you have any single skein fingering weight yarn uh projects then please let me know because i've got a lot of s single skeins of yarn i don't know what to pair them with but it's less traveled yarns and the colorway is slight blue it's from the definition collection and it's um, the 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's got 463 yards and it's merino from Argentina. So it's got this lovely pastel blue color. Um, and yeah, it's really nice. I'm looking forward to finding a project for it. And then the last one she got me is this. Let me get them all out. This yarn. I have three skeins of this. This, is the, this one kind of got undone in shipping, I guess. But that's fine. Um, so this is from Nashua Handknits. Let me see if I can show you the logo. That's where it's from. Um, and it's 50% linen and 50% 50, 50 cotton. It's 100 grams and 200 meters or 220 yards and it's made in Peru and it's got this really nice blue color um, and what I had planned for this is an absolutely gorgeous top it's called the Faye Summer Top by Irene Lin or Irene Lin um, and it's got cables and bobbles and texture and uh, like these little flattery sleeves and it's just it's so pretty so i'm hoping to make that with this um i have three skeins i'm not sure if it's enough but otherwise it will just be cropped and that is fine i'll just wear something underneath it so that is oh no i have one more thing to show you let me get some water first because my throat is getting a bit dry and the water stood in the sun it's really warm now um i participated for the first time in tour de fleece this year um if you have never heard about this it's basically a spinning event where you spin yarn during the Tour de France, the uh, cycling competition. And I got this box from Het Wol based uh, here in the Netherlands. And uh, for every day that they cycle in the Tour de France, you get a little parcel um, with some fiber in it that you can spin. And it's sort of a gradient. Um, some colors fit in better than others, in my personal opinion. But um, yeah, it was a lot of fun participating and spinning a little bit every day. I had the 10 grams and it gave me one full bobbin. I think it's 210 grams in total. Um, and yeah, there's a lot more colors hidden underneath it. I still have to put this on a nitty noddy and get it soaking. Um, but I just finished plying this last night and it was so much fun. It's all different bases. So um, every, every color was a different kind of wool. And like this one had a little cotton naps in it and um, different sheep 
and I think some had a bit of sari silk in there and it was a lot of fun to have something different every day instead of working on the same project for quite a long time. Um, so yeah, I think that is all I have to show you. Yeah, so that was quite quick. I kind of expected to sit here for quite a lot longer, but that is fine. Maybe the next one will be longer, maybe not, we'll see. <laughs> I feel like I, I started off super, super quick. I didn't even, even barely even introduce myself. Um, but yeah, I'll hopefully do this again. I won't really have a schedule because um, I like to be home alone when I film so that my parents and stuff aren't listening in um, because Yes, I still live with my parents because the housing market in the Netherlands is insanity. You need to be rich if you're alone to move out of your parents' home. It's it's terrible. It's at least for the, the area where I live. I live right in between all the cities. Like I'm in the middle of Amsterdam and Rotterdam and Utrecht uh, and Leiden. So I'm right in the middle of that and it's just it's it's horrendous. You need to be rich. Um or you need to be together with someone else so that you can both pay. Because on your own, it's just, it's barely doable. So anyway, yes, I like to be home alone when I film and they're kind of unpredictable when they're here and when they're not here. Um, so we'll see when I get a chance again. And also it's gonna depend on how much I actually have to show like, if the only thing I do within the next week is finish the Oslo hat and I've barely done anything on the Fantastic, for example, then I'm not going to film because then the hat is the only thing I have to show you and I'll just save that for later on. Um, so yeah, we'll see when I film again, but I quite like doing this. Um, so definitely at some point I'll be back. <laughs> um, if you have any questions for me for next time, then please let me know. Uh, drop a comment down below, message me on Instagram. Um, oh, there's one more thing. I have just done my first translation project. I used to work as a localization tester in Glasgow and um, in the game industry, which is basically where you, tra where you check the translations, but sometimes we also have to do translations ourselves. And um, I really quite like that because, um, yeah, I just, I quite like working with languages. And um, so I put a message up on my story on Instagram, like, is anyone looking for a translator into Dutch? Does anyone want to get their patterns translated or whatever? And someone reached out, uh, actually Nude Knits. She's uh, the same name on Instagram and on Ravelry. And I translated the matcha top for her, or matcha, matcha, I'm not sure. The matcha tea. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to work on and it's out on Ravelry now. So, um, I mean, if you're listening to this, I don't think you would really need a Dutch language um, pattern. But if you do, if you like listening to uh, podcasts in English, but you prefer a Dutch pattern, it's up on Ravelry. I'll put a link down below and um, check it out. It's a really cute top. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to edit this, but if I do, I'll put a picture here. If I don't, then you know by now I'm lazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I'll see you next time and bye-bye. Uh,